Because clear, the Zambian people made the uh, comparisons, compare and contrast. And they have come to a conclusion that the UPND and Misaka and the HMR are a failed project. And therefore, with all the mistakes you can talk about, Edgar Chagalung, UPND have done a fantastic job to make him look like a saint. As Zambians are saying, that slogan haunts Mr. Aka Indechilema to the core. And they want to brutalize, destroy anything, everything, just for purposes of trying to block Edgar Chagalung from standing. They are even willing to temper with the you know, trust and confidence that Zambian people have always had in the judiciary to just push that agenda. And they were saying to Mr. Akainde, stop it. Leave the judiciary alone. Leave the judiciary alone. And I appeal to everybody in the judiciary and otherwise there is a way in which Mr. Akainde Echilema, if he just woke up from slumber, he can deal with his political opponent. And the simplest way to deal with the political opponent is just... Watch the entire video, my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. I was asking, now that you had participated in the dialogue process, do we still need dialogue? What are the issues? I think, for me, dialogue it should be one of the critical lifeline of a nation. We should be able to talk. We should be able to engage. But I think there are two fundamentals that must always be in place. Those who decide to initiate a dialogue process must themselves equip themselves with the issues at hand. You can't just wake up and say, we want to initiate a dialogue process. On what basis? And the, I remember one time pastors and apostles and whatever priests coming to President Lungu and I happened to have been there. And they were saying to President Lungu, I think it's important that we initiate a dialogue process between you and President Aka in the HLM. And they were very passionate saying, Imagine, Mr. President, if you are just seen tomorrow shaking hands with Akai Ndechilema, it will go a wrong way. Shaking hands. Then when we ask them, do you really even understand the fundamental issues that needs to be addressed in your proposed dialogue process? They were blank. So I would propose, in principle, yes, dialogue is necessary, it's important, but the issues must first of all be identified and understood by those who want to preside over the dialogue process. Because then you are going to hold accountable, the parties accountable to the issues that you want to address. If those issues are not identified, it is just a sham. You are just basically trying to do a PR stunt which will not resolve the issues. Even at personal level, if there is a difference between a husband and a wife, you can't call people, husband and wife, he said, kuna tuchite, tulande paadi, asia chupo chenu mkwai, imi nenekunta, shika tena maboko. And then, mwamu nefola mwaka, good kapo. This is very nice. You have resolved nothing. You have to go to the root of the issues. President Lung was wise to respond. Colleagues, I'm ready to discuss with you. But there are fundamental issues that all of us are alive to. Are you telling me Oasis Forum, the church, and other people don't know that UPND sponsored a, 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 a clique of individuals within Patriotic Front to try and destroy PF? Are we telling us that Zambians are not aware that the police were forced to stay throughout the night to change office bearers 
so that they can be able to impose the leadership? Are you telling us that the other people are not living in the same environment they're living in where the president last week, he took some MPs in western Pro northwestern province, including GBM's daughter, and people can't read through that he was using GBM's daughter to try and justify, create a situation that justifies his incarceration of GBM? get the daughter to go and make public pronouncement of endorsement of him, what if he knew that GBM was going to be jailed the following day? What kind of hypocrisy are we ready to, what level are we able to, to tolerate this kind of uh, arrangement? He, the president, was coming out of the podium, going to talk to his ADC, telling him to go and tell Jonathan Daka, let him introduce himself as he, Vice President of Patriotic Front. The ADC the first time didn't get the message. He went and talked to Jonathan Daka. He was speaking and he didn't say it. The President still went down to go and remind the ADC that tell the guy to say he's Vice President of Patriotic Front. Are you telling us the church doesn't see that? And you want to say let's go for a dialogue without first of all streamlining or defining the issues that needs to be addressed? The grievance of Edika Chakalungu, your grievance, my grievance, the grievance of Patriotic Front is that the UPND, Misaka in the has attempted, though failed, to destroy PF. The only thing we want is that my Mausamba has done nothing. He has not even made any dent in terms of the unit of the party. We just want the Registrar of Society to correct things. That's all so that our democracy in this country thrive. If Aka in the HLMA did not temper with the opposition, did not gag members of parliament in parliament from speaking, possibly he would have performed better. Remember Mwanawasa, what did he say after he was threatened with the, the possibility of Michael Sata actually dying? He came to confess that he was afraid that had Michael Sata died, Possibly that was going to be his end of his good record of performance. Because the more Michael Sata criticized him, the more he performed. This president is a coward because he doesn't want to be criticized. And I want to repeat again, Mugandu is a coward. He can't face criticism in his face. He's a coward. Bold men and strong leaders live comfortably in the midst of checks and balances and criticism. For me, I've proved in the many times that I've been arrested, that my elder brother, Aka Inde Ichirema, is a coward with a supergetty spine. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, in Bemba, we say, leaders, kings, should understand that people will criticize them. In fact, the term used, Itukwakumbali, means the king will be insulted, you know, Kumbali Yamushi, away from the, 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 the royal palace. The hallmark, for example, of good leadership like that of President uh, Frederick Chiluba was his ability to sustain very, very strong criticism. Some of it very personal, some of it very insulting. They would go even to his height. They would go to his family. He never arrested those people. He allowed criticism. And the issue you've given of President Manawasa, who they could even call cabbage because of uh, his accident, and they alleged that uh, he had, uh, you know, uh, mental degradation because of the accident. But he embraced the criticism and joked about it. You cannot uh, uh, joke with the Akainde Ichilema who send the police every day. And Honorable uh, Nakachinda, you've um, displayed. Uh, some form of bravery that is rare in our country. Despite the many arrests, despite the humiliation you've gone through, the long and prolonged detention, you still speak like you've never even faced any arrest. I think um, uh, our legacy of our politics will judge you very fairly. We need to, what, what is the state of the patriotic front and where should it go? And I want to transition to the major decision that the party made regarding political alliances and the electoral pact. Maybe let me uh, first comment on what you have just said. There has never been any significant change in any society 
without people that gathered courage to challenge the status quo. And every time such a crusade is initiated and undertaken, those who pursue that path are usually misunderstood at the beginning. Martin Luther King Jr. was misunderstood. Actually, many people try to call him to order that as a reverend you can't undertake the activism you're undertaking. Today, in America, even when he never became president, he died just in the wilderness preaching the message of equality. There is a Martin, Martin Luther King Jr. Day celebrated. Nelson Mandela at some point was called a terrorist, jailed for 27 years. But because he had gathered courage to challenge the status quo, even to a point where his life was threatened with his, uh, him being sentenced to death, he made pronouncements to the effect that equality, racism, and all these ugly manifestations by the apartheid regime are not right. <coughs> Over time, today he celebrated. Back home, the Kapwepwes of this world, the Kaundas of this world, the Chirubas of this world. Aka, the one that you hosted a few days ago. The bravery he showed in the late 80s and in the 1990s to convene a meeting of the like-minded to push for the introduction of multi-party democracy was not an easy undertaking. It was at the back of a threat for their lives and their liberties. Actually, if you ask Aka, you tell you, when he's extended invitations to some of the prominent, prominent people who were assumed to be brave and strong, for that meeting they were afraid to accept the invitation. But what they did was that they replied to the invitation by saying to Aka, we are not aware of what the agenda is. Please, can you tell us what the agenda is? So that when, if the system went and arrested them, they will produce their reply and say they didn't know what the agenda was. But Aka was brave enough to still proceed. What am I saying? It has to take brave Zambians to challenge the status quo. What is going on is wrong. It should not be condoned by anybody. What is happening to the judiciary is wrong. I was convicted for exposing the interference of the executive in the judiciary. Am I not justified today? But with what is happening, now the agri head of what to expose in 2021 is fully manifest. We are saying the parliament is gone. How many times was I summoned that parliament and taken to court for it? Am I not just fight today? The seditious practice that have been slapped with several times, I would definitely can tell you, one day be just fight. It has to take what I call rebels with a cause to change society for the better. If you succumb and I don't want to, you don't want to rebel against the wrongs perpetuated by dictators, by tyrants, and end up on the wrong side of these dictators, they can never be changed. I'm just hoping that God will grant me the grace to still be alive, to see the change against the trajectory that Misaka and Ichirema is pushing. Because after his five years tenure, if we miss the opportunity to get him out of office in 2026, the damage will be too deep, too grave, and too complicated to correct after another five years. And I'm appealing to the Zambian people. This is not a joke. This is not just mere politicking. This is an appeal. Rise up wherever you are. At least contribute the bit you can to correct the wrong.
that will eventually affect our children and our children's children in the long time to come. Rebels with the cause are never there to cause problems in a nation. Actually, they are patriots who want things to be done correctly. Coming to the party, the status of the party, I can tell you that outside the attempt by UPN, which has failed, yes, the UPN now have moved their guns and effort to try and you know, harass our president, President Edgar Chagalungu, who is also 60th Republican president. Uh, they have harassed his family, harassed his wife. And uh, the idea of him coming back to active politics and possibly contest in 2026 gives Mr. Akai and HLM and the UPND sleepless rights. Because clearly the Zambian people have made the uh, uh, comparisons, compare and contrast, and they have come to a conclusion that the UPND and Mr. Akai and HLM are a failed project. And therefore, with all the mistakes you can talk about Edgar Chagalung, UPND had, have done a fantastic job to make him look like a saint. As Zambians are saying, that slogan haunts Mr. Aka Indechilema to the core. And they want to brutalize, destroy anything, everything, just for purposes of trying to block Edgar Chagarung from standing. They are even willing to temper with the you know, trust and confidence as Zambian people have always had in the judiciary to just push that agenda. And they were saying Misaka and to Misaka and the, stop it. Leave the judiciary alone. Leave the judiciary alone. And I appeal to everybody in the judiciary and otherwise, there is a way in which Misaka and the HLM, if he just woke up from slumber, he can deal with his political opponent. And the simplest way to deal with the political opponent is just perform. Just score two or three goals, fantastic goals like Maradona would score. Just score on the minimum price. Just score on fuel price. Just score and deliver the inputs to the you know, farmers. Just score one or two so that you can feed into your appetite for boasting. You are good at it. It's just that now you are boasting and bragging over nothing. And the fact that you are good at boasting, I can just imagine how you would burst into braggadocious you know, uh, wit and the competence if you scored just two goals. You would have dealt with the opposition, not abusing institutions of governance and throwing through the window the rule of law. That we must not accept as Zambians. Outside harassing President Lungu, they are attempting to deal with every opposition political party and political leaders, whether it is the Citizens First Kalava, whether it is the Socialist Party, Fred Membe, whether it is the, you know, uh, Dan Pule, whether it is Edith Nawaki, whether it is the Savoy Mboela, whether it is the a KBF, whether it is, them, them, they are all facing the same wrath. But as the largest political party, we are saying to our colleagues, the only way we can be able to correct what is going on is to have a unified, unified voice. Of course, um, we got involved in an alliance called UCA, and uh, as PF, we noticed that there's need for some definition on how we engage in alliances and how we relate to our friends. And uh, two, three weeks ago, we uh, met a central committee and uh, deliberated on these issues and adopted or appointed an ad hoc committee uh, which went to interrogate the issue of uh, alliances. Uh, I think the, the ad hoc committee was thorough, studied both you know, abroad and local uh, alliance, uh, alliances that have been formed and the fundamentals that govern those alliances. Uh, historically, I think in the report we got to hear, uh, read about the, the alliance between UNIP and ANC uh, for independence to be attained and then further on other 
uh, developments in the country, including studying the uh, alliance between UPND, uh, UNIP, and FDD uh, as a case study to see how it worked. So that as a party, as we engage our friends, we can have a very clear, defined you know, uh, way of relating. And I think we are, as we engage our colleagues, uh, uh, the UCA, uh, those who have knocked at our doors like Tonsa today, uh, those who have made pronouncements like People's Pact, we are yet to also get uh, the Zambia we want and others on board so that we can be able to have this conversation. But that is all done in good faith, in the interest of the nation, motivated by patriotism, that I think there's something that needs to be corrected. And that which needs to be corrected needs everybody to put aside their personal or narrow interests and look at national interests for us to push an agenda for the country. Mr. Aka the UPND, are an enemy of the Republic of Zambia and we need to show them the door. What will happen in 2026 if we are characterizing President Nakainde Chilema as a dictator who is tampering with institutions? Won't he attempt to retain power even if he's lost elections? What is the opposition doing about that? You see, that is uh, clearly the agenda of Mr. Nakainde Chilema. Clearly, that is his agenda. And um, uh, look at how uh, the appointments has made at ECZ of UPND cadres. Madam uh, Zanomis is a UPND member. She was in UPND Ligaria. We have uh, Chipenzi who even attempted to run in Chirundu as a member of parliament on UPND ticket. And we also know what role he played in the 2021 uh, elections and, uh, and uh, gears and all those things. Um, the only ray of hope, the light that shines, um, is the fact that the, the will of the Zambian people has always proven to be stronger than any form of Mingarato. Mr. Dr. Kaunda was very confident that he will play, but he lost. MMD, the party to which I belonged at some point, was very confident in 2011 that they had everything in con under control and they would win, but it didn't happen. Even Patriotic Front, I was telling one young you know, youth leader in the UPND this uh, afternoon when he, you know, uh, waylaid me at some more, I was telling him that the confidence with which you are exerting that you are going to win cannot even compare to that of Patriotic Front. But we lost. I am very sure that regardless of the registration processes, the shenanigans to temper with the system, the will of the Zambian people. When Zambians rise, especially when it is time to vote, they, they, they look like they were born from one mother. Because it's in unison across the country. And they also have the capability to defend their vote. The real answer is to make sure that the vote is defended. We know that they are registering in a discriminatory manner voters concentrating in the Zambezi region. But Misaka in the has missed the mark. The Gen Z don't know tribe. <laughs> My sons are free sons. <laughs> My sons, when you talk to them about the Mutonga, they don't hear those things. Because first of all, they are confused in the sense that you know, intermarriages have moved to the third, fourth generation. So they are connected to the entire country. So they can't associate with the Tonga alone. Because along the way, someone, or they associated also with a Bemba, with an Easterner. So the trajectory of wanting to push a tribal tag is ancient. And Daka in the is not such an old man. This guy is almost as old as our country. He is expected to perform much better, to behave as if he is 100 years old, 100 years old talking about tribe and making decisions inclined towards tribe. 
is very unfortunate. I know he doesn't like it, but I'm telling him as a Tonga speaking person, even when you want to favor your tribesmen, there's a way you do it. You don't do it as blunt and as he has done it. No. You, there's a way you can take care of your relatives. There's a way you can take care of your tribesmen. But you need, as president, to expose genuinely with the deliberate effort to unite this country by getting everybody feeling they are part of the governance system of this country. That's what Kaunda did. That's what Chiruba did. Do you know that Chiruba's favorite people? We knew that uh, Ben Mwinga was one of his favorite person. We knew that uh, Vincent Malambo, who today is a great disappointment to everybody. Me, I didn't as <laughs> expect that Uncle Malambo could behave the way he's behaving. Sorry I'm saying it openly, but he has uh, disappointed me. One of the people that actually, when I mention his name, my tummy turns, that has disappointed me, is Mumba Madira. He's here to prove me wrong. When he was appointed, we were among those who were whispering and announcing that, yeah, I think the, this guy may just surprise us with the choice of uh, people he has appointed. So far with what has happened to the judiciary, and Mumba Madira is quiet. Mm. Mm. I don't know this Mumba Madira, but the one I know, mm. I'm here to see him manifest. I'm here to see him manifest, and I'm praying and waiting for him to manifest. Same applies to his deputy. That Mike Musonda. I was privileged to have been in the Senate committee where we are scrutinizing his nomination. His CV, his background. Yes, he may have had some connection over Lima Bank with the president, but the level of objectivity the man has exhibited in his career. I don't expect the rot happening in the judiciary to be undertaken under their watch. I'm yet to wake up from this dream. I think I'm dreaming. And I hope that after this conversation, Ms. Ambassador Mamba, you will pinch me and get me to wake up. <laughs> no, indeed, Zambia at 16. We have 60 years as a country. We are celebrating a Diamond Jubilee. And we appear to be at the worst, especially this year, where we have you know, the worst load shedding, the worst um, crisis in literally everything. The cost of living crisis, you know, look at the prices of essential goods and services. Then there's fracture with our national unity, with the issues that you've raised. Where do you hope? Because I think we, we could have reached the bottom. We need to begin to rise to where we aspire as a people. Unfortunately, because the president doesn't realize that we are there, to cure is a problem. If I have a terminal disease and I'm in denial, you know you can't help me. Uh, you got a point. He, he makes emotional pronouncement. I don't think Misaka Indechilema is the type of a leader that sits to reflect, read, and sit to just listen to others and possibly even demand for them to be raw with him. Just tell me. That's what a leader is expected. President Chiluva, you know, I, I, I must confess, I mean, I have been very close with uh, leaders. I think one of them that I was close to outside uh, uh, Emerson Mnangago, I was a kid, and he taught me how to drive, you know. Uh, another, another person that really I attribute with great honor to have influenced me was Stanford Flazo. Uh, but later on, it was President Chiluva. Uh, of course, in the later years, I interacted with Dr. Chiluva. I mean, it's, it's not everything was, that was wrong. Uh, I mean, the guy influenced me in many ways and uh, also some level of exposure. Uh, later on, I worked with, uh, you know, of course, before Dr. Chiluva, I worked with Mano Asa briefly then uh, remotely with the Rupia Banda, then Nevers Mumba, then I worked with Mutati. Um, uh, and every person you associate with have a way in which they influence you in one or the other. And I worked with President Edgar Chagwalungu. And um, I can tell you that with the Chiruba, there were days that he would just call you. 
and just uh, and you you are shivering under your coat but it's saying uh, and uh, uh, when you try to you know patronize him say no 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 that's not what i want to hear uh, just tell me what's going on then you disclose that maybe in the night he had gone to Kaunda Square to some ward officials where he went and learnt a few things which he felt you are not telling him. So he then tells you, and you people I invite you here, you don't tell me the truth. And if you have an idea of the subject, you obviously, you know, it, you, have a, you begin to express and tell him. And you will listen, jot down without any condemnation, without any justification. And that's how come Dr. Chiruba's strength was that when there was a debate going on, he would take a month, two months, three months without responding. And people would be wondering, but the president is not saying anything. But he has gone to Kitwe in Usakire. He has gone in Chimwemwe. He has gone to Ndola in Chifubu. He has gone to in Maramba. He has gone to Mazabuka somewhere in Ishuga. He has gone to Chipata in Navutika. Somehow you find his way. When Dr. Chiruba comes to speak, he will speak the language that resonates with the grassroots. But to a no? But any little statement, you also have in status, do you know that there is what they call a Monze corner? <laughs> there is what they call a Monze corner where my relatives, they behave as if they are in the village, where they type. Look at the watchdog, Kosque, and all those. That is the pure the thinking of state house. Now, when you read those things, just it tells you the level of primitivity and naivety of the house where Ms. Haka in the Chirema operates from, called state house. Coupled with the fact that white people under the Tony Blair, which he himself is boasting that I knew them before I even formed government. He is basically confirming that this is a, he is a puppet. The great Greg Mills have also established a unit to advise him. And there is no chance to redeem the situation. The only way to redeem the situation is that we have to prepare ourselves for the vote. But we should not allow Misaka in the HLM to be able to manipulate and collapse institutions of government. We have to salvage ECZ. We have to salvage the judiciary. We have to salvage parliament. And members of parliament, the person that we're talking about being involved in an accident, our good brother and elder brother, Chimba Kambu, when he was in opposition between 2011, he alone would actually take up the government through parliament. Coupled with that uh, gentleman, Savior, you know, Chish uh, Chishimba, Chishimba. Mm. they would go to Parliament to go and pet, you know, pick it. So I can only encourage colleagues in Parliament. Press briefings are good, but I think we need to up the game and fight for the Zambian people. There is a cause, and there is truly a cause. Let's all rise up and do something about it. Thank you very much. Dear viewers, before I invite Honorable Nakachinda to say his last words, before we started this program, or at the start of the program, I announced that uh, we, as a family, you know, the Patriot Front, we have a bereavement. Honorable Chimbakambuili's two brothers, you know, we lost them in uh, a terrible fatal accident that occurred at Lubushi, near Kasama in Kasama district. Uh, the two persons that are feared dead are Honorable Shimbakam Willis' uh, brothers. He himself, when we were coming to broadcast, was also um, okay. He had survived the accident, but he was in a lot of pain. And they had taken him to Munkonge Mini Hospital. But we, we have hoped that both the medical staff and our people in Kasama could quickly move him to Kasama General Hospital. His lawyer also survived and his driver survived. We have wished for 
their safety and for their prayers. And again, you know, our sincere condolences to his two brothers that have died. Honorable Kambuili was rushing into Kasama. You are aware that his appeal case has be, was being heard in the last few weeks, and it was scheduled uh, tomorrow um, on 16th October, uh, Wednesday. And so he was going into Kasama from Luansha to attend to his court case when the terrible accident occurred. And the accident occurred near Kasama when they had nearly arrived. We are yet to get more details, but what we know is that he, he survived the accident. We personally spoke to him before we came into this program, and he was in a lot of pain, but he was grieving already because he had confirmed that he had lost his two brothers uh, in that accident. So we continue to pray for Honorable Kambuili, his lawyer, and so as a family of the Patriotic Front, we are mourning. We are hosting Honorable Raphael Nakachinda. We've had two fantastic hours with him. Honorable Nakachinda, what are your last words? Well, my last words, first of all, is to strengthen and encourage President Edgar Chagolongo to remain resilient um, and steer the ship. Uh, Zambians are basically looking up to him, and uh, he must be assured of our total support and uh, in that we will stand with him and we will do our best uh, with him to provide leadership in opposition and a clear alternative. Uh, and I want to assure the Zambian people, yes, we have President Lungu, uh, our flag bearer and leader, but the good thing is that he has also done a fantastic job in raising a cadre of leaders within PF and in other spheres. They will, you should never be worried. There will never be a chance when you are stranded in terms of leadership. 26, we are definitely going to get into government and get rid of this burden that you are, you know, suffering to conclude or possibly, uh, you know, you know, imagine how you are going to get rid of. I I just want to support you there on the level and um, uh, type of leadership the patriotic. Front has reservoir of leaders. Maybe when I was an ambassador, I was PS, I dealt with government and government mm. officials at many levels. But I'm always amazed at the depth and knowledge of the leaders at the Patriotic Front have. Mm. Either they're, whether they're in committees or whether they're in central committee mm. or our leaders in parliament. Right. Patriotic Front clearly has a huge reservoir of leadership. And that's a uh, that's a big, big resource, right. you know. And that three years on, and despite the relentless attack from President Rakhine Ichilima, to still have structures intact, you know, the 116 district, all the 156 constituencies, and most even in Parliament, other than a few, you can see that Parliament is still intact. The leadership is almost intact. Yet, you know, the, the party has suffered this assault. And those that they attempted to buy and give certificates and think that they could go away with the party, I think the disappointment has been to the sponsors because then they're surprised that they can't marshal anyone around themselves. So, yeah, the patriotic front uh, just needs reorganizing. You really have the depth and reservoir of leadership that I personally get surprised every day when I am interacting with them. Now, thanks very much, Ambassador. And I must commend you that uh, you are doing a fantastic job on the conversation and the podcast. You have brought uh, eminent personal, per, you know, uh, personalities. And I think their contribution and discourse uh, keeps on shaping not only the narrative, but also feeding into what is expected of this country to be today and tomorrow. Keep up the good work. That's why we call you the machinery. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. He likes calling me the machinery. The, you know, the machine is machinery is that you are all encompassing. Everything is in you. Indeed. I take that uh, with, uh, with, with, with grace. Thank you very much. To our dear viewers, we are hosting Patriotic France Secretary General Honorable Rafael Nakachinda. We took some depth into his life. Who, who is he? What makes 
Honorable Raphael Nakachinda, how does he marshal the courage and bravery that you witness, especially when he's giving those press briefings, and the adversity that has been affect, that has affected him, has affected all of us with the numerous harass, harassment. With those few words, I'd like to invite you to another podcast. Until next time, God bless you, God bless our country, and shalom, shalom. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.